They know how to problem solve. They found the weakness of the tank and they've improved upon it. It's genius. It's, it's absolutely genius. And this shows why the French are so, uh, so destructive in the EU tournament so far. Innovation. Innovation. They took the prowess of German engineering and uh, improved on it with French creativity. A, a lethal combination, right? Really, when you think about it. A very lethal combination. So here we go. Stone Chapter 2, Layer 3. I believe it was Layer 3. It could be Layer 2. I forgot. Either way, it's on stone. 1940, Chapter 2. Nighttime. Oh, it's the night layer. I didn't realize it was the nighttime layer. That's interesting. I didn't know. There's, I think there's two versions of this map then. I think there's a version where it plays in the day and a version where it plays in the night. I didn't realize there was two layers of this map. So we're actually playing on a night time. I, no, I, I personally like the nighttime maps. But I know it's very split down the middle. Some people love nighttime. Some people hate the night maps. So, so we can see the storm guys. They're the guys on the defense this time. Parabellum. And it looks like they are going to defend the first cap. They are going to be defending the first cap. Uh, I I speculated that maybe they give up the first cap, but it looks like they are going to be uh, trying to defend it. We'll zoom on over to the French team quickly. Cole FR. Again, Cole FR is a, co a collaboration team. There's a lot of French clans in this uh, team. So let's, let's have a look what they're fielding. They've got a Logi going out to the uh, east. They've got a MSP that has fallen over. That's a very unfortunate start for them then. I don't know how that happened, but an MSP fell over. They've got the command car rolling out with a squad. They've got a Panhard. They've got the... I can't remember these French tank names. That's the, I know that's the Panhard. I believe that's the Renault something. And I don't see a second tank. So it looks like they're only... Oh, wait, wait. No, there is a second tank. So there's a Panhard, a Renault, and a Matilda. Very... Very strong tank there. So Cole FR immediately having a huge advantage there by getting the probably the strongest tank in the Chapter 2 lineup. So they've got a very strong tank there. See the Cole FR guys. I think that was a Logi. So yeah, they are going to build a logistics over here. Interesting what they're building over here. I imagine this is going to be their mortar team. And you can see. They're fanning out. So they're actually not rushing the cap. Cole FR aren't actually going to be rushing the cap. As I thought and predicted they would. Instead, they're going to be trying to surround the cap instead. And you can see, look at this perimeter set up by um, Parabellum team here. They've set up a huge perimeter around the first cap. You've got a clan here uh, by the CIB guys. Watching out to the west. You've got a small storm squad here. Watching out to the northwest. You've got a storm squad here. Watching the main road coming in from the west. And then you've got another CIB clan over here. Watching to the east. And then you've got a few defenders on the cap itself. So. Very interesting start there. By the, co uh, the coalition French team. By not rushing the cap. Well, you can see the bombardment is already coming out. Is that a AT gun or is that the French anti-tank truck? It is the French anti-tank truck. So a very unique vehicle here. By Piper. I'm sorry if I pronounced any names wrong in this game. By Piper with the French uh, anti-tank truck. A very strong uh, weapon. Already bombarding the point. He is on his own though. So all it takes is one German soldier to flank round. Hit that. Hit that shot. And then this French vehicle is going to be out in the middle of nowhere. So you can already see Hash Brown. It looks like Hash Brown is already trying to sneak up to take that out. Hash Brown. Who doesn't like a good Hash Brown? 
So Hash Brown looks like Hash Brown is rushing to take out this uh, AT truck. All it takes is one shot. Or has he got a bomb out? No, he's got his canteen now. Come on, Hash Brown, hurry up. There's there's action elsewhere. So Hash Brown moving forward slowly. And you can already see there's a lot of engagement going on. A lot of names going down over there. Oh, Hashbound actually has the HE kit. And there we go. Oh, I think Hashbound just got hit by friendly fire. Oh, no. Oh, that is unfortunate for Hashbound. He did kill Piper, but I think he got hit by some friendly fire then. Very unfortunate for Hashbound. He was going to block the AT truck, but... He did kill the gunner, so the AT truck is out of action. Very unlucky for Hash Brown there. You can see the combat going on now. So the Matilda flanked round to the uh, west, western, no, sorry, the eastern side of the point. Supported by a lot of infantry here, slowly pushing forward, bomb, uh, bombing down through the trees, getting another kill on there on Cox. So we've got Lucky Shot and Splatter in the Matilda. I've got to say, even though Hash Brown died, that's still a good that's still a good thing that happened over there because that means now the French have to retrieve that AT truck. They can't just spawn a new one at main base. They're going to have to retrieve that AT truck. So, in a way, not destroying it is kind of beneficial because it is going to waste French time having to retrieve that. So, we can see here the Storm guys who was defending the main road getting pressured from the north and also the uh, east. Ooh. A shot there blasting apart uh, Salvem. So that is the Panhard, I believe. The Panhard creeping through the trees. We can hear a Stuka coming in. We're going up into the air to see where that Stuka lands. The Stuka might land on the AT truck. It did. I'd actually say that's maybe a waste to destroy the AT truck. You could just send maybe another guy over there, blow it up again, or even just leave it. You can see a smoke barrage coming down now. I expect this to be a French smoke barrage as they are slowly pushing in from the eastern side. The Batilda sporting and the Panhard nearby. And this is what I'm talking about with the defenders on this map in the Chapter 2 map. The defenders, the German defenders, are going to have such a hard time destroying these tanks, especially a Matilda. Even when they get their own tanks to the front line, it's going to be incredibly hard for them to take out those tanks. Honestly, the easiest way to take out those tanks is by um, by having commander assets drop on them. Artillery, bombs. So you can see the Panhard pushing close now. This is literally the cap. This house is literally the center of the cap here. So the Panhard looking to get into position so it can shoot straight down this main road. You can see the smoke barrage coming in. I expect that is more French coming in. So they did call in the artillery smoke. But I expect they've got mortars also putting smokes further behind. So that they can push even further on cap. There was just an exchange going on in here. I just missed the exchange of the... Uh, it looks like this guy, um, who picked every letter in the alphabet, killed Phalanx. So the Panhard just scouting the area. We do have the CIB... Uh, Squad still over here. So I'll quickly rush over here because it looks like there's an exchange going on over here. I'm just trying to zoom forward. It was Pepper. It was Pepper again. It looks like they've been found. So we have a... This must be the commander. So we've actually got the German commander and a Logi fighting against some French troops here. So we've got uh, Pepper who was in the AT truck. And they do have a rally, so they have flanked around and they have placed a rally down in the far west. And their commander is actually under fire. It looks like the French are actually going to take out the commander and also take his commander car at the same time. Which is, obviously, commander dies, that's five tickets. Like, man car, I believe it's another five tickets. So, a little bonus there for a pepper. A little bit of revenge after he was knocked off his AT gun. But look at this as well. You can see the French. The French kind of did what i predicted where they would flank and disperse around the first cap because the second cap we'll zoom in on the second cap this is the second capture zone right here this hill look how easy this is to defend you have visibility from all the all the forests around you 
very easy to get dug, uh, dug in. So it looks like the French call FR, they're trying to flank around the best they can and encircle the defenders. So not only can they get the first cap, they want to be on the second cap immediately afterwards as well, by the looks of it. So I'm just trying to zoom my camera. I'm just trying to slow my camera because my camera's in turbo speed right now. So we've got the Matilda. We'll zoom in a little bit. The Matilda. Matilda has a lot of ammunition and it's very, uh, very difficult to kill in this in this version of the game, in the chapter two maps. So he can be out here for quite a long time. Unless he gets hit by an AT gun or a uh, commander asset, this Matilda is gonna be a very stubborn force for the defenders, the Parabellum team to deal with. Matilda rolling down the road, looking, looking like he wants to get towards the house so he can start, start putting shots in on the house. You can see Mortify coming down as well. Matilda slapping a kill there. So it looks like the Storm squad with Jam Falcon, Hash Brown, and Patri uh, the Patriot C have been pushed out. I'm trying to see if I can find the mortars. So I think this is the mortars over here. I'm not sure. I'm not going to zoom all the way over there for the French. But that could be their mortar team over there. You've got the Panhard here. Trying to push out the last uh, last few defenders. Hash Brown again. Hash Brown with that HE. Looking to see if he can take out the Panhard. Now the HE, the heavy explosive charge, can destroy the Panhard. The Panhard is very quick. It's very agile. And it has a great firing power. But it is weak. It is weak. A HE can do significant damage. And I believe can even destroy the Panhard. So Hash Brown doing his best to try to deal with the Panhard. So, Mr. Salty pushing up here. We'll zoom back over towards the cap. And Matilda has backed off a little bit. Let's get an aerial view of what's going on at the moment. Because the battle is very spread. So, you can see the storm. Storm guys have been pretty much... They've been pushed back to defending along the road and towards the second cap in this little arc here. So, the French have gained significant ground through the forests and trees so far. Uh, over 10 minutes have passed, and now comes artillery. This must be French artillery. It is landing close, though. So, looks like that was one burst, maybe three bursts of uh, French artillery there. I actually did count. Hash Brown still chasing the pan hard. But so far, the French have done a great job at pushing the defenders back. That starting uh, perimeter that the, the defenders have, the defenders had has been demolished and it has been pushed back so now it is just a few defenders left in the uh, the house with the matilda rolling forward again with lucky shot we'll just zoom on to the matilda for a second more smoke coming down now another advantage for the french have going into this game they're smoke grenades. The smokes are the same as the British. They're instant cast. Jam Falcon rushing forward here. Missed. Stem missed him. Is he going to get shot in the back? Shots going out. Jam Falcon managing to get Mr. Salty. And getting seen, but then bleeding out himself. Or he might have got shot in the back by General. Falcon doing a great job there, though. And then Falcon squad getting the last kill on the uh, General there. So, great play by Falcon. But it looks like the French... Have pushed forward into the building. Got Skota. Securing the two-story. Clearing it out. Going upstairs to make sure there's no one in here. And if they can get a bit of reinforcements here, I think this will be where the French take the first cap, maybe. If they can just have a few more reinforcements come in. So we've got Favlian and Goths. Only Savian now is at the building. So he's moving in. Getting the kill on Flavian. Savian does have the MG42. So he's very good at uh, close range at the moment. Even hit firing. MG5 coming out from across the road. And Goskota then just got headshot. I'm not sure who took out Goskota. So the defenders, Parabellum, have pushed out the French. A good grenade going out there, getting a kill on Zark. 
the horrible Fisher, the honorable Fisher, and also Clem taking some damage. Also, Antonio going down to a grenade there as well. So, I was wrong, Parabellum. I have managed to secure the buildings back. What tank is this here? Is this the Reynold? So, yeah, the Reynold here, the little light tank. It's only a light tank, but the Reynold is very strong. It has a lot of ammunition. It's got great firepower, and it's also very agile. Honestly, if you haven't driven this tank yet and you're a tanker, I recommend it. This is one of the best tanks to drive, just purely for how nice it handles. It's very reactionary, and it can turn on a dime. It can spin faster than any tank. We've got an infantry push coming in now. I'm going to hide the nameplates for a second. Three-man infantry push coming in. Smoke's going out, or were those grenades? in the first side of the building. The commander here putting shots down range. More smoke coming in now. One CIB guy down there. Aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. Crawling away. Hiding. Antonio. Or Antony. Guys, you need to have an easier name. I'm sorry. Aye, aye, aye. Has been found. But he is still alive. By the skin of his teeth. Had he actually got saved by a teammate? So, uh, Soyan here with the MG42 actually saving his teammates there by taking out both the French troops who was in the windows. So, a very close battle so far. 30 minutes left though. The tickets are... Uh, they're not too far apart. The the French attackers do have more tickets at this point. That MG42 doing work there from Savi and putting fire down onto, uh, onto these buildings. You got Canna Peach. Hold it up. Is that a mortar? So we've got... I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name. DJ with his uh, hand mortar putting down fire there. But look at the French. So it looks like the, the French attacking forces have encircled all the way around now with the FFI squad fully encircling around the uh, the attackers. So Parabellum are encircled on the first cap now. If the French can keep up this pressure, they do have more tickets, and I don't think they've lost a single tank yet. And you can see all the Parabellum, there's a lot of Parabellum defenders all trapped in this little bubble here. A couple of mortars going down here, and in fact, you can see a lot of the Parabellum team have already gone down to uh, explosives. Hash Brown reviving uh, Sorfin then. We've still got this CIB clan. Oh, it looks like the Panhard went down. I didn't actually see how the Panhard went down. Uh, the Matilda and Renault are retreating. They're probably going to go uh, rearm or repair. Oh, there is a tank over here, actually. What tank is this? There is actually a German tank all the way out here on his own. And this could be why the Matilda is retreating. It looks like it's just a P2, if I remember rightly. It's got that da 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 the, Like the 20 mil. So, it looks like a one-man crew. Maybe his crewman got killed. But I don't believe that P2 is going to be very effective. It's definitely not going to be very effective against the Matilda. I think it can destroy the, the Renault tank there. But it'll be very hard for him to do so. The Matilda now may be looking to get revenge on who took out the Panhard. Pushing him from the west side. I've got to say that it looks like the, uh, the French attack, though, has been halted. And Parabellum, once again re-securing the building. They've taken both buildings back. There are a few French soldiers left. Levian going down again there. I was just about to zoom in on him, but he has gone down. The Matilda is flanking around on the west uh, the west side. Putting some shots down. Trying to clear out this uh, CIB CIP, CIB squad that was watching the west flank. The Renault now coming to support the Matilda. But for the time being, it looks like the uh, the cold FR guys have been pushed back. They have taken almost the the reinforcements from the second cap, but they don't have enough numbers to push and take the first capture zone. I was just looking because there is an exchange, uh, some kind of exchange going on out here. It looks like I'm trying to zoom in. Periscope, if you're listening, please allow for the uh, admin cam to set default speeds for the camera so we can zoom 
around a lot faster. So we got sci-fi, sci-fi sci sci from the CIB guys. It looks like he was looking for this MSP, but it looks like he did miss it. So he is a Logi team. Looks like he was looking for the spawn point, but they have managed to get the spawn point away. Oh, it sounds like they actually put artillery out to try and get the MSP, but I don't see any of it being effective at the moment. Going back to the cap, they've got a brand new tank. So the Panhard crew, they brought out the big boy. Look at this. Look at this big boy here. And you you thought the, the Matilda was going to be hard to destroy? Now the French team has brought out this absolute Goliath. So I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say here, Cole FR, they've been very lucky with their tank deck, getting the Matilda, and is that also the B3? Having the Matilda and B3 in their tank deck, that is incredibly lucky for them. So Cole FR, it looks like they have managed to push back the defenders from the house. There are a few Parabellum guys over here, but they are being attacked by the Reynolds. I mean, I say that. Ay, 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 you're still alive over here. Will ay, ay, ay manage to get any kills? He's throwing a grenade towards the B. Oh, oh, ow. Uh, ay, 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 eating a shot to the face there. So, the house has been secured. I think South Southen's actually dead. Yeah, he is. He's actually dead. So, Cole FR now. They should be neutralizing the point any second. You can see the amount of numbers they have on cap. There aren't really any defenders left near the cap. Artillery is coming in now, though. So, this artillery might push some people out. The B3 took a little bit of damage then. It was just a free burst of artillery. It actually was ineffective. It, it did a little bit of damage to the B3, but not much. Tin is uh, tin has gone down, I'm afraid. The uh, the Renault moving in. The B3 holding the main road. And it looks like... It looks like the defenders from Parabellum have retreated. They're not going to try and retake the first cap. They are now going to entrench onto the second capture zone. The second capture zone is already in the fire, though. Look at the smoke barrage coming down. Look at the artillery barrage coming down. And I've got to say, Cole FR are currently over 100 tickets in the lead. So if this comes down to a ticket game, Cole FR are in a huge advantage right now. So you can see Parabellum at this point. They're trying to secure the perimeter. They're trying to set up their squads to watch different angles. Already, you can see a French team, uh, a French squad, the LNO guys. They're pushing in from the west side. Black Sheep here putting some shots down range. I, I do love the sound of the French rifle, that bolt action. It's got a little bit of bass to it, but it sounds a bit airy. That psh, It does sound nice. Compared, compared to the car now, that is a, is a very heavy heavy noise the the french just sounds it just sounds nice and smooth so the french uh the french attackers have neutralized the first cap there is a stuka coming in we'll have to see where the stuka lands it might be on the capture zone no it wasn't it looks like it was at the old position of where the Matilda was, but it fell a bit short for the Matilda. The Matilda has relocated. More artillery coming in here now for the uh, the French. Getting a good amount of kills as well. That's what they need. When it comes to this second objective, you need to bombard it. You need to throw everything you have at it. Artillery, strafes, bombs, smokes, mortars, anything you have, because you, you can get so entrenched as the defenders on this first cap, it is incredibly hard to take. So let's see how well Cole FR do against Parabellum when it comes to attacking the second cap. Uh, the Matilda bouncing a shot there. I, it, using an AT rival against the Matilda, I, it, I feel like it's a wasp against an elephant. You, you're not going to do anything. The AT rifle 
in the chapter two layers really are to me pointless. And I'm gonna be producing a video to show how bad they are soon. Keep an eye out for that. Secret plug to myself. Um, so Call FR is pushing up the hill. Very slowly, strange droid going down there. Ay ay ay, hiding behind a big rock. Good on him. One thing the French do have in their arsenal as well. We're talking about how strong the French are in the chapter two match. The French 9mm squad leader gun is so overpowered. It's basically the, the MP5 of uh, Postscriptum. A very strong gun that the uh, the French have in their arsenal. Trying to call out to his teammate here. See if Triku gets the revenge. He did just throw a grenade. He's throwing a second grenade. It's going to revive his buddy. I'm going to hide the names for a second. Look how close they are. All, they, all he has to do is peek over this hill. So close to each other. Will he get the second one? Nope, shot in the back by the pistol. So, uh, Goff's doing a good work there, taking out a couple of squads, a uh, couple of uh, German defenders. Asho will uh, lead up and follow behind him. We'll zoom on over to here for a second. And it looks like, I assume this is just a basic rally. Yeah, so there is a rally over here. The LNO, LN, the LNO squad are pushing him from the west side. While it looks like the majority of the French team is pushing in from the uh, north and the east. And I've got to say, Cole FR so far are doing an, ex an ex excellent job here. They're doing an excellent job pushing forward. They actually have pushed a lot of the defenders off point. So the French teams, again, showing how strong they are. Uh, against all other teams in this tournament so far. They've completely encircled the German defenders. You can see the FFI guys in the uh, the south side of the cap cutting off any reinforcements. LNR in the west cutting off any reinforcements from that side. Smoke barrage coming in now. This is probably French smokes. So it looks like at this rate, if it continues... The French are going to take the second cap. The B3 pushing forward. The B3 is on half health. It looks like it has sustained some damage. Keck getting the kill on Willy then. And I think that is the capture zone. If the French can put some troops on here, that is going to be the capture zone in French hands. Parabellum really are struggling to get reinforcements through because of the flanking that happened here from Cole FR. Send in a couple of squads to flank behind and cut off reinforcements. Jam Falcon is pushing forward. Let's zoom on Jam Falcon quickly. He should he should be able to hear this rally. Jam Falcon going down. The rally is right here. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't hear it. Grenade going out. I think he's going to fall short though unless it bounces over that hill. Second grenade is falling short. It did do a little bit of damage but it just fell a bit too short. Another shot going down there. So, yeah. The French defenders having a really hard time def uh, being able to reinforce the capture zone. So, great work from Cole FR so far. They're doing what is necessary. They're, they're encircling around the defenders, making sure they cut off the reinforcements, and then they're pushing forward. So, great use of tactics so far. And it's going to be... It's going to be very hard for the German defenders from this point. This capture zone here was one of the hardest. It was one of the hardest for the attackers to take. And it looks like they're taking it. Arti Ooh, that is a big artillery barrage coming down, though. I don't think it's going to be enough. It did take out three, uh, three attackers, but it's not going to be enough to push them back. And I just want to point L LNO out here. So they did lose their rally, but... The moment they saw their team was on the capture zone, they was immediately trying to flank and get behind again. So the moment the, their team got on the capture zone, they were already making moves to get behind the defenders and, uh, and, and encircle them. 
Mr. Salty here. Who have we got on point? Steam. General, uh, General Lieutenant Akka, who is the leader of Storm, or one of the leaders. Doing his best. Getting hit by a smoke barrage. Getting a couple of kills there, though. He is going to bleed out if he do not bandage himself quickly. Is he going to go get the kill on Flavian? Unlucky for him, he got hit by a smoke barrage, but it didn't quite kill him. He's probably... He might go for the revive. The point is neutral. He, Arker getting... Ooh, he was stuck in a reload there. If he wasn't reloading, he could have killed Flavian. Very unlucky for him. But he did a good job trying to get the captive zone back. So the defenders haven't given up on the captive zone. They are pushing troops forward. Now that they managed to take out LNO, who was cutting off the reinforcements, the Germans are trying to get this capture zone back. Which would be huge for them. If they can't resecure this capture zone, that would be huge for them because the French team have already started to disperse and move on to the next point. A few revives going out. Ashy and what's that? Lick, lick it? Laquit? That SMG from Laquit. Three kills going out there from Laquit. They're doing their best to keep this capture zone. Ay, ay, ay. Trying to go up the hill now. He's getting shot by the honorable, honorable fisherman. And there goes the, uh, down. Ay, ay, ay. Getting killed by a fisherman. Mr. Salty and General moving forward here. And the French have taken the second capture zone. So they have secured the cap second capture zone. So we're going to move on to the third capture zone now. Which is on the south side of the town over here. But look, this is what I mentioned already. LNO and FFI have already cut behind the German defenders. They've already cut off... Uh, they've already cut behind the German defenders. Looking to cut off the reinforcements. And looking to enclose around the capture zone. So good work here. They're actually going to capture this MSP. Will they actually get this French MSP? They did. Exocet there capturing the German MSP. So that is another hard spawn there lost by the Germans. And you've got to say the French are looking very strong at the moment. The French are looking very strong to take another capture zone here. LNO pushing forward looking to get behind the town. Uh, Jam Falcon looking to secure the MSP. Will Jam Falcon get the MSP back? He is under fire. He's going to revive Garni. Jam Falcon moving forward. They need to secure this MSP. A grenade go now. Almost getting Jam Falcon. Jam Falcon might bleed out here if he's unlucky. Look how close they are to each other. Just next to each other. And Jam Falcon did bleed out. That grenade there from uh, Silmi. And Garni going down again. That MSP has been cut off. A great word to call FR. I've got to say, so far, great word to call FR. They're doing what is needed to win this game. I've just been told by chat it is the Renault R35. What's that light time? Thank you. Thank you, Twitch chat. Appreciate it. Speaking of the Renault R35, this is it. I believe this is a Renault 35 right here. A great tank. It has found and located the 88. And I think the AE is destroyed. It's hard to tell because it's night time. But I think this has been destroyed. So the Renault destroying the 88 there. So good job by them. There is some chat going up in the German defense telling the team, move back. We've lost that cap. Stop fighting over it. We're already being flanked. So the German defenders know they're getting flanked. Again, this is the third time the attackers have done this now. And it's working. It's working. So there's a bulk of the force from the French attackers who push on the front line while a couple of squads are flanking behind and they're cutting the reinforcements off. You can see that MSP was destroyed. So the German MSP has been destroyed. So the defenders are losing more and more spawns, which is going to delay them getting onto the cap and reinforcing it. The Renault 35 now driving through the town. There is a repair crane here. I doubt that's a French repair crane. I'm going to guess that's the German German repair crane. Man, I, one thing I will say about the Chapter 2 maps, I do love these French tanks. This is one of my new favorite tanks in the game. The Renault 35 driving through the town looking to clear out a few of the stubborn defenders. 
Meanwhile, the French are continuing to push forward. You've got the Honorable Fisherman and Antio moving forward here. Because Savian, Savian going down there to the Fisherman. Nickel Man. Is he hiding? Looks like he might be hiding or is he down? No, he is hiding. Getting a kill then on Antonian. Will he get the Honorable Fisher as well? Being smoked. I don't think that smoke is close enough to burn him. But it has blinded Nickel. So Nickel being blinded, having to move down. He's got his pistol out. The Mauser, I believe that is called, the pistol. And he goes down. The fisherman taking him out. Good job there by the honorable fisherman. We've got a CIB team here. Clearing out this approach the best they can. The Renault 35 moving back. It looks like the German defenders have managed to hold on. They did push back the encirclement that was happening. They did manage to push back the encirclement for time being. Some exchanges going out there. And once again, I don't see any French tanks. We're going to zoom on over here. So there is one, uh, sorry, German tanks. There is one German tank over here. Let's see what German tank this is. It looks like a P1 from distance or is this the P4? Oh, it is the the um, the P thirty eight T, basically a pan for one, very small recon tank. It does have a good gun on it though. This is one of the better nineteen forty tanks for the Germans because of the gun. It does have a good gun. It look look looking to get into maybe an ambush position here. We'll hide nine nameplates. So yeah, it has found a good position here where it can flank. But there's that Renault. Did you hear the Renault? The Renault is nearby. They would have heard each other, and you can tell the Renault did hear the tank. These tanks would have heard each other, so we might get a tank exchange here. So let's just go on board this tank exchange for now. There's the P-38. There's the Renault. There are rocks in the way, but they did spot each other by the looks of it. And now, it's a standoff. It's a standoff. So who's going to get the shots on first? The P, uh, the P-38 from the Germans doing damage. A bounce from the 38, uh, the Renault 38 though. You can see the German tank is retreating. It is trying to get away. Another shot going down there from the uh, German tank. A miss from the French tank. The French tank has speed on its side. The French tank is trying to look at the speed of the French tank. It missed its second shot, but it was able to get right behind the German tank. This is ballet. A ballet here going on. A bounce there from the Renault again on the French, uh, the German tank. The French tank using its advantage of speed and agility here. Look at it, dancing around the German tank. Missing a shot. It actually needs to be worked on. A miss there from the Germans. A bounce from the French. What a ballet going down here. A shot from the German tank, taking it down from less than half health, but the Renault tank Winning the exchange. The FFI guys there, Honor and Lewell, showing showing experience. They knew the strength of their tank. They knew the weakness of the German tank. So they knew the French tank wouldn't be able to win in a straight fight with the German tank. So they used their speed, their agility on turning speed as well to get behind the French tank. Use that as their advantage, and boom, they won that exchange. They were losing at the beginning, but the moment they put the strength of their tank to the test, great exchange there. That is what I love about these clan games. You see the best of the best in these clan games. You see players who put a lot of time into the game. They know the weaknesses. They know the strengths, and they put full advantage into both. We're going goth here. Goth moving forward, looking to clear out this building. Going for the revive on Peach. So I think this building is actually secure. I missed an exchange there. So Enigma getting a few kills. Spot by Daniel. So they have secured this building for now. But again, great, great, great use of tactics there by the French. Uh, we've got the CIB guys placing a new rally. Trying to secure the south of the town. So I believe the capture zone, if we zoom in, the capture zone is on this part of the town here. 
So really what you need to do is you need to secure this building here that you can see a lot of the German defenders are in and this corner building over here. These two buildings here are what you need to take when you're securing this capture zone. I believe also this building here is just in with its garden. Mortify coming down there. We're going Kino Master. Kino Master again. A great look at this spot from Kino Master on this roof here. He isn't a sniper. But he has found a great advantage spot. He's able to see perfectly across this field. It's hard to... There's a chimney in the way. So I'm trying to get a nice shot. But there is a chimney in the way. But a great advantage for him there. Getting on the buildings. Able to see down. Putting shots down range there. He did miss a couple of shots there. On I'm going to guess that's Jam Falcon. Nope. It's Kick the Mule. So there is 35 minutes. But look at the ticket lead. Almost 200 tickets ahead now for the attacking, uh, the attacking French team here. Will getting a kill on uh, CHYK there. So the French attackers, they have lost a little bit of momentum here. They did lose a little bit of momentum, but they are still pressing on. They are still using the tactic they have employed and did use successfully. They are trying to encircle the defenders here, trying to get behind them and cut off their reinforcement. There's some kind of exchange going on over here. Let's see what this what's going on over here. So it's it's actually the P the P2. I believe this P2 has been alive since the start of the game. I guess the P2 is being used as recon and try to destroy any um, French MSPs or Logi trucks that they try to bring forward. So I, I honestly can't believe he's still alive. But good job to him. There is a new tank coming up here. It's the B3. It looks like he went back to uh, main base to get re uh, repaired. So the B3 is coming forward now. I will say one thing about the tanks for the French on this map. The French tanks lack uh, torque going uphill. So it ca they can take a long time getting into battle when they have to travel over train. Another tank exchange going on here though. It is the... Another P, uh, a P1 here. Getting destroyed by a French tank. Is that the Matilda? So the Matilda is still alive. Also the Renault 38. And again, this is the this is the power of the French tanks. So the Matilda still live since the start of the game. The Renault 38 still live from the start of the game. The only tank that the French have lost is the Panhard, and that it shows their tank, uh, their ticket lead as well. The Germans losing a lot of tanks, and it's just down to the balance of the tanks on this chapter of maps. The French tanks are far superior than the uh, German tanks. So, FI squad now moving in, trying to secure the buildings little by little. Sweet Kisses. I can appreciate that name. Sweet Kisses. Using the Mauser, getting a couple of kills there. Getting shot at from the back by Ben. Going into cover. Sweet Kisses. Good shots there by Sweet Kisses. Getting a kill on Ben. Ben going down. But, I can hear a tank exchange going on down here. I just... What just happened down here? So that is the B3. The B3 has gone down. Is that an AT gun? Oh, that is uh, excellent. This is what I was saying. So Papers taking down the B3 there. And the B3 is worth a lot of tickets. I think the B3 might be 30 tickets in Chapter 2. So a very sneaky 88 they use. And the 88 is really the only way the Germans are going to effectively take down these tanks. And that's what I was mentioning about these French tanks. The French tanks, such as the B-38, can't go uphill. It has to use these roads. 
it has no power getting up the hills. You can get up the hills, but it's incredibly difficult to do. So it looks like the B3 struggled getting up the hill. So what he was doing, he was trying to flank all the way around and use the main road. Drove straight into the 88. And uh, Papers, 007, took down the B38. So great kill by him there. Excellent. We've got the, uh, the Renault moving in now, moving into the cap. Driving down the road. Look how cocky this, this tank crew is. They don't care. It's 1940. There's nothing that can kill them. Driving through the town. 80 rifles, grenades, just bouncing off. Not a damn care in the world. The only thing he really has to watch out for is AT mines. And I don't see any AT mines up. So it looks like the Renault 38 is trying to help LNO secure the rear. So it looks like that French light tank is trying to secure the rear for the LNO squad to flank behind and cut off the reinforcements. So the Renault's spinning around. Look how quickly that Renault, the, the Renault can, just on a dime, he can just spin around. But he has heard, I think he's heard the P1. Uh, sorry, the P2. It, I think he has heard the P2 and he did spot him. I missed there. I miss again. So the P2 is trying to go and get repaired. With a Renault hot on his tail. I don't know the speeds. I think their speed is roughly the same. So the P2 might be able to get away from here. As long as he don't get stuck. And I know the gun on the, uh, the Renault there isn't that effective at tank battles. Just zooming in. So there is some smokes going down there. We'll keep an eye on this tank battle for now. I think the P2 is going to get away though. There is a second tank coming forward, though. Let's zoom in over here. There is a second German tank. It's another P-38. This is the third P... I, I just call this a P-1. The first Panther. So they've had three of these, and they also have the P-2 now. So the P-1 and P-2 side by side. Looks like the P-1 is ex... Uh, ex Ex escorting? Escorting, that's the word I'm looking for. The P1 is ex escorting the uh, the Renault. Uh, sorry, the P2. So he knows where the French light tank is, so the gunner is looking over in that direction. Ooh, and there goes a shot out from the Renault. There is a German tank crew next to it. Trying to mark it for the uh, P1. We'll see if the P1 puts some fire down here. The Renault is trying his best, but he can't pen the P2 at this distance and at that angle. So the P2 is retreating now. A shot from the P1. Return fire from the P38. The P1 is going to struggle to pierce the 38 at this, this angle. He's firing straight on. He's not going to win this fight. And the P1, one more shot. And the P1 is going to go down here. The P1 needs to retreat. And there goes the third P1. So this crew here. FFI, Oscar Level, and Andrews Hornet. Hornet. Great work by them in this P38. That was that was really a bad exchange for the... Uh, the uh, the PT to take on there. Stuka coming in. Not very effective. It looks like he missed. I don't know what he was actually going for. Because I can't see a tank over here. But you can see the French. The French infantry moving closer. And they still almost have a 200 lead ticket. And with almost 30 minutes ahead. I think the French are going to win this purely on tickets at this rate. You can see the infantry moving forward. Artillery barrage coming down now. This is going to be German artillery. Very effective. Getting a couple of kills there. Holding back the French push. The Matilda driving down the main street. Yeah. Again. 
these French, or in this case, British tank, they don't care. Infantry, what is, what is infantry in 1940 going to do against this tank? They need, the, the defenders need some kind of AT gun on this street here. They need a, they need some kind of AT gun to hold these tanks from just pushing in. You can see the AT rifles just bouncing off the Matilda, doing no damage at all. They need to either place down some landmines, or they need to um, get an AT gun, maybe an 88. Another shot from that AT rifle, ineffective. I, I would guess the AT rifle is trying to kill the crew of the Matilda. They're trying to aim for the crew slots to tr see if they can kill the gunner or driver. So, a B, or B, or B. Or be securing the corner building here, killing the uh, the defenders. I I I I I I hiding in a bush. That French tank taking no no damage at all. Artillery coming down now. This is French artillery trying to bomb the defenders of the last buildings, and they did just kill a couple of defenders there. So there are only two defenders alive currently on cap, and that's Andely. And uh, Gani and Andley just went down. So if he's Gani is the only one alive here. He's the only one alive on cap at this point. You got the Renault 38 pushing in again from the north. Again, look at these tanks. They just don't care. They just do not care. They are just driving straight through the streets. Straight onto cap. If this was a chapter one or chapter three map. These tanks would have been destroyed instantly. But because it's a chapter, uh, chapter 2 map, the infantry has no way to deal with these tanks. They're just driving in. They don't care. They don't care at all. The Matilda driving back again now. Uh, this is German artillery again. I'm going to guess this is German artillery doing what they can to hold back the French push. Silmi and Abby, if they could just push across here and kill uh, Gorni, Garnet, and secure this building, they should be able to get the cap. Honorable fishermen pushing forward. The defenders down to 100 tickets now. 100 tickets, and they're going to lose the third cap here. The Renault getting a kill on uh, road type bank. And look at this, look at this Renault now, this light tank. He knows where the reinforcements are coming from and he's just gonna hold the road while his infantry push forward. He's just holding this road so the German defenders can't come and reinforce the camp. Hash Brown there with the HG might try to come forward, running straight in front of the tank. Trying to place a bomb. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. Hash Brown uh, talking, talking a lot then, and uh, that's what he gets. The Reynolds like, okay, you, you want a piece of me? Whoosh, boom, you dead. Hash Brown uh, got more than he bargained for there. So you can see the French have moved in now with the Matilda supporting on the street. They have taken the main defending building and the German defenders completely wiped out in the town almost. There's a few remnants of them alive. Uh, Eric flanking from behind. Oh, the CIB guy is going to be able to get in here and do some work. I'm going to hide the name tags for a second. Eric with the MG42 getting one kill there. He's trying to get into the building to push back these attackers and he goes down. Who was that? Menu best off. Menu best off. Getting the kill there. And it looks like the uh, Parabellum guys might be retreating. We've got Daniel pushing forward. Will Daniel be able to clear this out? He's going to run right in front of the tank though. And the tank taking Daniel down. So that is going to be the, the third camp has been neutralized and Cole FR, I don't see any way for the uh, Parabellum guys to get the third cap back. 
They have completely secured the town aside from a couple of people. Jam Falcon, I believe, the only German alive currently in the town. Squad leader, Jam Falcon. Interviewed him last game. We, uh, I casted for Parabellum. That was uh, weird. He got the kill on the roof. I think his gun like bugged out a little bit, or it could be a spectator bug. Oh, there's a pan hard back. So the B, the uh, B3 crew that got killed by the 88, looks like they respawned in a pan hard. I've got to say, Cole F4 have all the best tanks. They've got a Matilda. They've got two pan hards. They had a, B, a, a B3. Cole F4 had the best tank deck for chapter two, hands down. Whereas I feel Parabellum maybe, maybe didn't get the best German tank deck. CIB guys holding on with their squad on the corner of the town, but that's it. Cole FR took the third cap and over 250 tickets in the lead as well. So 35 minutes. I, I, I don't think time is going to run out. I think Cole FR is going to win on ticket lead alone at this point. And I really hope there's a 15 minute break because I need a pee really badly. This is what I don't get for going for a pee before the game begins. So Cole FR. Again, let's just look at the map. See, see old Cole FR trying to do the same as they did before. They're trying to, they're not just attacking at the front. They're trying to very slowly encircle around uh, the defenders. I'll just zoom on over to what the next capture zone is. Tank fire going down there and a tank going down. Was that? An, I'm going to guess that was an 88. It was an 88. So Irwa on an 88 going down there to some tank fire. So this is the next cap. It is this little, um, this little French village, this little hamlet. So the 88 going down there. The 88 is being manned again though. So you got the LNO squad trying to flank around again. They're trying to use this uh, tree line to flank around. I can hear the Panhard. The Panhard is pushing forward. Less than 40 tickets now for the defenders, Parabellum. And I've got to say, I was looking forward to seeing another French team going into this tournament. This is the second time I've spectated a French team. And I've got to say, it con they're continuing to show the dominance of the French teams in this EU ladder so far. Cole FR and 501E have been very strong. Probably the two strongest teams I've witnessed so far in this EU tournament. So you can see the Germans talking now with the defenders. They're saying at this point it's better to bleed out on tickets than to give them another objective. So it looks like the German defenders are just going hell to the wall at this point. They know they're probably a long way behind on tickets. So they're just they're just like, screw it. Kill us. Kill us. Just kill us so you can't take any more capture zones. 12 tickets left. And uh, this this first match of the round four tie is going to go to Cole FR. And there it is. And there it is. Cole FR taking round one. A great play by them. Great play by them. We'll, I'll bring up the kill uh, sheets very quickly. So here are the French teams. There. And then we'll go down the German teams very quickly. Now I'm just going to be right back very quickly.